2022 Festival of the Arts. My name is Ed Millet, and on behalf of the Festival of the Arts Board of Directors, want to welcome you to this uh, this wonderful concert. It's an annual tradition to have the Paris Bands and Orchestra be our final event of the festival, and so super excited to have that. Um, for the festival, want to thank the City of Big Rapids and the Downtown Business Association, and especially Ferris State University for the support to help make this month-long celebration happen every year. And uh, my fellow board members, and some are out here, Karen Manoski is back over here waving her hand. And just a little bit over this way, Jarena Keys is waving her hand, and kind of back behind her, I saw Roxanne Cullen is waving her hand. I don't know, Mark Gifford may or may not be here. Don't see a hand, if he's here, he's shy. But, um, but uh, thank you from all of us. So thanks to the many artists and presenters, both from out of town and out of state, but so many that were here locally too that helped make this whole thing happen, but most especially thanks to all of you for coming to these events um, throughout the month, because if nobody came, there wouldn't be any point in doing it. So we very much appreciate you and appreciate your support, and we are already working on seeing what happens in 2023, but we're excited about it and hope that you are too. Um, so that really is what I have to say by way of introduction. Um, and I'm going to introduce Scott Cohen, director of the Ferris Bands, Dale Scorning, director of the orchestra, and we have Gary Gackstadter. But I'm going to have Scott Cohen come up here and introduce him and tell you what's going on. But thank you so much for being here today. Good afternoon. Got a beautiful one, don't we? It could be a whole lot worse for February. Um, speaking of that, our, our featured uh, artist today, Gary Yak Center, tried to come up at the beginning of the month twice to set up the art exhibit you see out here today, but he lives in St. Louis and they got blasted. They got worse weather down there than we did up here. So, um, so working with Ed and the other board members, especially Roxanne Cullen, we decided to uh, make uh, to shift the exhibit from artworks over here to the lobby. So if you haven't seen the artwork yet, um, please make sure you take a look at that. It's a lot of the same images you were seeing up here before. Um, I don't know too many people that are equally talented as an artist and a musician, a composer, a conductor, so you're all in for a huge treat. We've really enjoyed working with Gary uh, yesterday and today. And um, so I want to welcome you on behalf of Fair State University and our instrumental music program. Um, my wonderful colleague, Dale Scoria, you're going to see him bouncing back and forth doing, playing saxophone with us, conducting the orchestra, playing piano, lots of different things. And so we're all kind of bouncing around doing different things. Our first piece is uh, Fanfare by Gary, and I'll be conducting the band on stage, and he'll be conducting the strings in the pit. And uh, when we conclude the concert, the last two movements will be uh, Gary on stage and Dale with the strings for the last uh, two movements of the symphony that we conclude today constantly. So you're going to see sometimes where it's one composer with one group, sometimes we've got two composers with two groups. So it'll be a lot of visual things to keep track of. But the, the biggest thing is you're going to enjoy the music very, very much. And um, so we're going to get started here. Tonight. Before we do, I'd like to give a big round of applause to Gary Gack Center. Please stand up, Gary. Welcome.
my pleasure and my honor to be here. I, I'm so glad you are here as well. I'm glad we're all getting back together again. What a, what a joy. That first piece is Fanfare Magnificat. I've been inspired by a composer, English composer named Rafe Vaughn Williams for many years, and he wrote a couple of pieces with that four note thing, boom, 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 and I decided I would to, to honor him and my lifelong love of uh, his music. Love Life for Evangelina came about because of a band director, a high school, really great high school band in uh, St. Louis. Uh, the band director came to me and he goes, man, I want you to write a piece. I want to commission a piece from you. Great. I'm ready. I've got one almost finished. And he goes, no, I want, to, I want you to write it about my daughter. Uh, okay, well, uh, tell me about your daughter. <laughs> and, um, my heart was sinking. And he goes, well, she's a rainbow child. Well, I, I don't know what that is. And I said, what's a rainbow child? He goes, well, it's a... It's a child who has been born after the mother has experienced a miscarriage. And in this case, the miscarriage was twins. So I felt... I, I was coming apart. I can't even talk about it now. I have a twin sister. We were born a little around a year after my mother had a miscarriage. So I've gone all my life and I didn't know I was a rainbow child too. Lullaby for Evangelina, and Evangelina means good news.
And I need to mention that the little duet at the end, uh, that's the twins. Black Sea, we picked this music a long time ago. Had no idea what would be going on today in the newspapers. I read yesterday that the Black Sea has, uh, NATO has not been uh, guarding it. And uh, Russia has moved about, I think, a dozen ships into the Black Sea, uh, most of them big enough to carry tanks. Uh, it's been a place of, of violence. It's been a great a place of, of uh, upheaval for a long time, uh, ancient times. So this piece was inspired by a poem by Robert Bly. Ah, uh, on this planet we are born again and again. A gold sun rises in the east, but for us, it is a black sun. Each time the black sun rises, dazzling and tremendous, its sadness flows into us. I listen, and I see a horse dragon swim up out of the black sea. It climbs into the air. Play on, play on. For what can we do but long for this dragon water? from the Black Sea to fall on us.
We didn't learn anything about it. I have great respect for Native Americans. And uh, I visited the Battle of the Washita site when I was in high school. And I have, I have dreams about it every now and then. In November of 1868, a, 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 a strange blizzard came up and uh, gave about two feet of snow. Well, that didn't start, stop George Armstrong Custer from leaving Fort Supply, Oklahoma, and just marching south with his 7th Cavalry. He wanted to make sure that his assignment was fulfilled. Kill Indians. They marched for days through the snow, and one late evening they heard a baby cry, and they heard they smelled smoke from fires. And uh, they found uh, an Indian encampment on the Washita River. He didn't allow his men to eat or to build fires because they, they wanted a surprise attack. So at dawn the next day, uh, he surrounded the camp and just started shooting people. All the while he had his music being played, his favorite drinking song, Gary Owen. He traveled with his own band, and Custer needed music for the massacre. They opened up fire, and the natives ran and tried to get into the to the river. One of the two of the people shot were uh, Black Kettle and his wife. It was Black Kettle's tribe, and uh, Custer had no idea whose tribe it was. He didn't care. He just shot a bunch of people. And uh, the men, most of the men were out hunting, you know, uh, what the heat. So the victims of this massacre basically women and children, and the elderly, including Black Kettle, who was a, one of the biggest leaders for peace that the Cheyenne Indians ever had. After that, they gathered up 800 horses and shot off them to make sure that the neighboring tribes didn't have any food. And then they took 50 some odd prisoners and made a walk home. This is a horrible piece of music. And uh, sometimes there's no words. There's no words that can describe this scene. But I think music can. This is the Battle of the Washita. It takes about as long to play this as it does as the battle took itself.
I remember it was a beautiful day, gorgeous, not a cloud in the sky, and I, I was in a meeting that morning, and I got out of the meeting, and I was walking across campus, and everybody was running toward the auditorium, and I thought, what is going on? So I walked over there, and uh, in the auditorium they had uh, the screen lowered, and they were showing the, uh, the Twin Towers coming down. Wow. I just, I don't know what tonight, I still don't know. The next day I came up to school and uh, just stunned, and I started messing around on the piano and uh, came up with this for our, our country, which is under any circumstances still beautiful. Thank uh... you. 
This next piece, I get to do something I've really never done before. This piece was commissioned by a, a, a really great uh, band, and I finished it and wrote it for them. They were, I'd never heard it. All, all I heard it was on the computer. I'd never heard them rehearse it. And then COVID hit, and we all got shut down. I've never heard this piece before played live. <laughs> So he wanted it on this medieval thing. I've done several, I, one of my little side roads in my life is to get into medieval history. And uh, so I ran some ideas by him and he picked gargoyles, which uh, I, I just love looking at gargoyles. They were these hideous sculptures that they put on the sides of uh, churches and, and, uh, and cathedrals and, and castles that were supposed to uh, make the evil spirits go away. Oftentimes they're depicted with their mouths wide open and they're also used as rain spouts so that when it rains they're not gargling there. You know? <laughs> so it's, it's really strange the history of gargoyles and people were very superstitious then. They were afraid that uh, these things were going to come off the building and fall on them. So I get to sit and listen and not do anything. Egypt sit and listen while Scott conducts gargoyles. Great fiddle tune, and uh, 
I worked very closely with a man named John McCutcheon, who is a, he's kind of a renaissance man of folk music. He plays hammer, dulcimer, uh, guitar, piano, fiddle, banjo, just about anything. And uh, he got me into to, uh, Irish music, and he got me into uh, fiddle music. And if you've ever heard Charlie Dan Daniels' song, Devil Went Down to Georgia, this is part of the lyrics uh, to that. Granny Does Your Dog Bite uh, is in that song. So we've got a couple of soloists up here, and we're ready.
great rehearsal yesterday, and I think I told the percussion about 60,000 things to do. And they've had their hands full this concert. Let's have a hand for our percussion. This has been, uh, I still can't believe I'm here doing this. It's, it's, it's a humbling experience. I've had a couple of concerts like this before elsewhere. I've never had a concert and an art show at the same time. Um, so this is a real unique and wonderful yeah, thing. thank here before we play our last two numbers. First of all, Dale Scornian. Uh, I have the job that Dale Scornian had uh, 50, 20, almost 20 years ago now in uh, St. Louis. He came up here and I moved into his spot and this was all his idea and, and getting to meet uh, Dale many, many years ago. He plays in, in the city band at, uh, in St. Louis and that's where I first met him. So let's have a hand for Dale. Center this whole time. He kind of keeps me, picking me up, taking me to this place, taking me to that place, all of that. And uh, we, we are simpatico. Uh, it's like I found a brother when uh, we had some like, hour long phone calls. Let's have a hand for Scott. I went to the most amazing concert last night, and uh, I'm still kind of taken aback by it. I, it was just a unique experience. I thought Ed was going to play baritone and tuba, and he came out and played 13 songs by Elton John on piano and sang, and it was a stunning experience with his son and uh, on percussion and, and keyboards and a uh, bass player that, I'm sorry, I can't remember his name. Let's have a hand for Ed. Presentations, sir. A lot of work went on to, before I got here. A lot of work by a lot of people. And this is just the culmination of hours and hours and hours of preparation. I would be remiss if I didn't say how grateful I am to these people. Let's have a hand for these musicians. Okay, we're we'll going to do two more. Uh, this is uh, two movements of a, a, a piece of music I wrote as a, um, um, a social protest. Uh, so when I lived in Kansas, somebody, this millionaire was driving through and he decided that he wanted to dam up one of the last, no, the last, pristine creek in the state of Kansas. It's 10 miles long and it's called Grouse Creek. It has several species of animals and fish that don't exist anywhere else. And uh, he wanted to dam that up, make it into a resort community. Uh, and uh, well, we, besides the 100 plus year old farms that are there, there's Native American th sites throughout that many Native American burials would have been underwater. So I thought, well, how can, we, how can we protest this? So I wrote a piece of music, the art teacher and I, and his name, he's a nationally known artist. Uh, a lot of people are collecting his, his artwork, Tim Allen, Jerry Seinfeld, they buy his paintings, and I happened to teach with him. So we put our heads together and featured his landscape paintings with this piece of music. They're not all of them. I put some different ones in this time so you can see the scope of Mark's work. But uh, this originally was about an hour long. We're gonna do two movements of it. And I am so grateful to be here in Michigan uh, when you're having warm weather. And uh, <laughs> if I haven't gotten to meet you and shake your hand or at least give you a fist bump, if you wanna talk about the artwork, be out there in just a little bit, and I, I am grateful, grateful, grateful for this wonderful opportunity. The land and the sky, 
from the Grouse Creek Symphony. 